in this video i'm going to show you how to visualize earth engine image in the previous tutorial i will already show you how to uh, get started with uh, earth engine image how to uh, visualize them but in this video we're going to get into more in depth how to um, visualize and for example also to uh, masking mosaicing okay so uh, f first let's go to the website to download the uh, noble example we're going to use in this video so go to uh, the url tutorials.gmap.org and then go to image image visualization then click the download uh, icon select a folder where you want to download this uh, image so i'm going to download to my under my documents ge then uh, hit save uh, it should be and right now your uh, computer then you can open anaconda prompt uh, if you're using mac then you can use the terminal to open anaconda so i'm going to open anaconda prompt from there i'm going to conda oop conda activate ge and then just type jupyter notebook and here's the notebook then we navigate to documents g then just click uh, the notebook it should open so from the left here uh, uh, uh here you can if you want to see the table content uh you can so if this is if the document is uh, a bit long then you can use this to navigate through so in this we're going to cover nine uh, uh sections so we're going to go through one by one but before I do that, I'm going to uh, quickly go uh, recap what we talked about in the previous tutorial. Uh, we already used some of those in the, um, the last uh, video. So, uh, the for, for example, uh, what kind of bands you want to show on the image. And also, you can set the minimum and maximum uh, when you want to uh, show the values of the image. Uh, gain and gamma and also uh, palettes. Um, you don't have to use all these uh, parameters. So, these are all optional you don't have to provide if you don't provide anything just uh curly brackets uh within the add layer um then it, by default it's going to show the image but it might not be uh suitable for what uh you want so that's why we want to customize okay so um this goes through it first let's just execute uh, uh this code block to import the libraries including uh, earth engine and also gmap then we can we already did this one in the last uh, tutorial so we, i'm just going to quickly execute and you can see the result uh, so this is the uh, lens set uh, image like right? lens set 8 top of atmosphere and this is the uh, image id this entire uh, 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 string is basically a unique id pointing to that specific image but now you don't have to worry too much uh, in, the, uh, in the next uh, video we are going to talk about how to use uh, image collection but for now assume that you already know this is the image id and then you wrap with the e to image then you become an object otherwise this is just a python string uh, it means uh, it's not really an image once you put this one then you become a real image in the cloud and then you can add this one to the map so map, map to add layer so this is the first parameter if you don't know what to put in you can uh, shift tap on your keyboard to bring up the um, uh, functions uh, tips so you will see in here we have a uh, five uh, uh, parameters so the first one is the earth engine object you want to, we want to add to the map so this can be an image image collection or uh, feature collection and how you want to visualize that and the third one is the name of the layer so what you want to see on the layer control and also what uh whether you want to show it by default or not um if you don't put this by default it's going to be true and then opacity so opacity is um you can also change in the layer control so like what we talked about last time you can click here and then click the layer control you can also change the layer opacity from here so this is like a real-time dynamic you can change the layer opacity you can also click this button to actually to make adjustments uh, of the oop, it looks like i have some uh there might be a bug of my um i need to take a look at black one uh so gamma 0.95 
let me take a look so but you say expect a flaw uh not a lease okay yeah this is good to know so anyway let me execute this one more time um i, I will fix this ones later uh, for now you can just simply uh use this and so this is how you can uh visualize an image uh what you see or you put in here is a visualization uh, parameter so uh bands we want to uh display band five four and three and the minimum and maximum so how do you find out the minimum and maximum is to uh either the metadata or if you don't have the metadata you can just click the uh inspector icon and then from here you can just click uh click 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 uh you can see the values in here so this is all the values because it's a uh, 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 all reasonable data so the value is from zero to one uh, so the minimum and maximum uh, you can set zero to one uh, it's going to probably a, a little bit dark image because uh, not many pixels actually can reach one so if i check this one oop. did it turn off right now okay so as you can see it's pretty dark because uh very few images uh pixels uh, reach the value so we can change the data to a smaller one basically here you stretch the value range so that it has a better contrast and it's a little bit more clear you can certainly set to a smaller value uh you, you're going to see a lot of white color for example let me see uh point three right it gets brighter and brighter but you don't want to be the value to be the maximum value to be too low otherwise it, it will just become white and then you cannot really see much okay so now you see a lot of white color because anything greater than 0.1 is going to be changed to uh, just 0.1 so it cut off and that's why you want to basically play around with this value and then until you are satisfied with the value that is the base contrast then you can use the parameter so this is the key you want to uh, use next one uh, color palette uh, as i show you earlier in here this one we don't use the color palette because this is multi-band for multi-band you can only use like uh, if you have a band's uh, parameter you cannot use a palette so you but if it is a single band image then you can use the color palette in this example we want to calculate the normalized difference water index if you're not familiar this is a sim basically a simple um, uh, index that you can use to extract water with the other common one is an uh, ndvi normalized difference uh, vegetation index uh, you can also do that so in earth engine it's very simple if you want to calculate the uh, normalized difference index all we need to do is just in here right this is the image right you just apply dot something so it's us engine image have a bunch of uh, functions you can apply so uh, for example i can just type here image dot and then if you hit uh, tab on your keyboard it's going to bring up some of those um for now because it doesn't know uh, what it is so you don't see that one uh yet but uh if you once you execute this one you can actually apply the function so normalized difference basically b3 and b5 so b3 is the uh, uh green band and b5 is the near infrared so green minus near infrared divided by green plus the near infrared so this is how you can calculate the normalized difference index let me just execute and then show you the result oops need to delete this one happen just weird is it supposed to display the result let me take a look oh it's being uh by default it's uh so set to false that's why it doesn't show up so if it change to two you will by default it will show up so if you come back to here uh, now you can turn this one on and off so this is the ndwi as you can see from this one right now if we can provide a palette right and for the palette you can provide as many colors as you want right if you provide palette you want to have at least two colors right so they can stretch the color the uh, lower value the lower and the upper end in here uh, because for the normalized difference water index the result will be uh, between negative one to one so most of the water you are going to have uh, uh, higher values so you the more close to one the more likely it's going to be water 
So in this example, you can set a minimum, maybe zero, or you can say to be a little bit higher. But the maximum is going to be one because uh, the normalized difference uh, result uh, will be always between negative one and one. So uh, you don't want to set it to larger than one. Then from the palette, right, you have two colors. So think about here, you have this is basically so-called hex color call. Hex color, basically you have RGB. So every two numbers right if you use the rgb like uh, uh integer you'll be two uh, maximum is 255 255 and 255 so rgb so the first two digits represent uh r uh, red and then green and, oh, and then the last two represent blue right so if you zero it means it basically is, is nothing so you'll be black so if you just zero zero six zeros you'll be a black color if you f f uh, f f f f six f will be white color. In this case, you have a zero f f. It means it's like full spectrum of uh, uh, green and blue. So this will be a, a cyan color. And the last one here is just blue color. So basically RGB. So you have like a, a, a color uh, addition model. That means you don't have red, you don't have green, but you have full blue. So that's why it's blue color. So in this case, the palette is going to be uh, ranging, changing from cyan to blue. And this is how we use in here. If you see from this one, right? So this is this part is basically cyan. And then you get to dark, uh, darker and darker in blue. If you want to inspect the values, you just click this one and then click here. Then you can click, click to see the value, right? So lows all um, low value, basically negative. So in, if this urban area, uh you want to get just uh uh lower negative uh uh which uh, water index if this real water is going to get a positive value so uh, this is uh, uh, close to one so uh, loads are likely to be uh, water so this is how you can inspect the pic uh, pixel values after that for example after we calculate the normalized water index we might want to based in this case we want to extract water but how do you extract water uh, so you can just use a simple threshold so this is so-called masking in earth engine masking is very common if you just want to you if you want to mask out a certain uh, uh area or region you can do it easily just using one line of code so in the next few example, uh, we are just going to build on top of the example that we use above. Keep that in mind, the code gets longer and longer, but actually, uh, most of those are basically repeating. So if you see from this in here, right, we create the map, we get the image, we calculate the normalized water index, and then we add it to the map. So this is the key. This is what's new in this uh, section. So masking, masking, if you see from this one, right, we get the normalized water index, and then we want to mass out those uh, values lower than 0.4. So basically, we assume that if the normalized water index value greater than GT means uh, greater than and equal than 0.4, it's going to be water. So in that case, you you end up with a binary value. So it's either one or zero. So if it's one, then it's going to keep the value. If it's uh, zero, it's going to remove the value. So let me just show it in here and right now so you end up with just this one but if you really want to see like what this one look like for example you this is also one image so you can think about here normalize gt uh, 0.4 uh, if this greater than 0.4 is one uh, less than is uh, zero so this is actually a binary image if you want to add this binary image to the map you can do that as well so for example i can just do here they say a mask you can create another value and then a mask equal to this one right so and then from here you can change this one to a mask i also want to add this mask to the map i can do this just map dot add layer uh, mask i don't want to like change any uh, uh visualization just use the default then you have to use mask and let's see what happened okay so let me zoom up a little bit now we have this one if you see the, uh, the background is black why in here because this is the mask that we just created right so if it's anything uh, greater than 0.4 uh, at the NDWI it's going to be 
1 the other side is going to be 0 so you can also inspect the pixel value right this is 1 and this is 0 so really nice so basically this is a mask you can always create mask create a binary image and then use the binary image as a mask to mask out uh, other pixel values so once you do this one then we can turn on the one that we mask out right so the white area will be preserved and the black area will be just masked out so this is a simple way you can do uh, masking you can also do a self mask right so in this one here you still see that this is just the original ndvi values uh, ndwi values um, but if you just want like a binary that looks like what you see in the mask you can also do that as well so for example this is a binary how about i just want the white area i don't want the black i want to hide out the black how do you do that actually very simple so all you need to do is just to um in here i can create another variable called maybe bing a binary equal equal to a mask dot there's a function called self mask so self mask basically use yourself as a mask so if you use yourself anything greater than one or uh one or zero right so and then you just map dot add layer bin and i can say uh let's say binary maybe or maybe just water uh you can do that as well so once you click this one uh we can come back to here to inspect the layers you turn this just turn them all off look at this one water so the water right now is basically the white color you can change the color if you want so this is because right now we only have one value so all of them are just one you can come back to here and you can simply add uh um single quotes palette and from here uh colon square brackets so here because we only have one color we can just change it to blue color so in that case the white color will be changed to uh, blue color and let's take a look All right so this is how we can visualize and do the masking uh pretty simple and easy to do um you don't have to um go through a lot of steps it's just uh, this is basically one by one so you can build on top of the previous data layer to give you uh the outline output if you overlay this one on the base map you will see this looks pretty close but it's not perfect uh, but it does it gets the work uh, done also because we're using google map you can also switch to for example to um switch to uh, google satellite so this one because i haven't released the new uh, version yet if you want you can uh, also go to you can update the package you can add a new new line and then ge map dot update uh, package and then i can just uh, shift enter uh, it's going to automatically update the package and then later we can change the base map uh, easily so let's wait for a couple seconds okay it's done then i can restart the kernel clear the output once you clear the restart the kernel it makes sure that you need to re-import the library otherwise it it is not going to work so i just re-import the library and then i scroll down to here the masking section you only need to update once or once you're done you can, can uh, hit x on your keyboard to remove that line and i'm going to do one again and we can take a look here uh, this is the the final output i can just turn all the layer on and off right and then put the water so earlier i showed you that uh, you right now if you click here we have two more icons so this is the one that i just implemented uh, this afternoon so you can click this one to actually change the uh, base map so if i click right now click satellite uh, it's the background change to uh, satellite all right so i can also turn off maybe other data layers just the water so now you can see over there, this one on top of the satellite base map uh, it certainly is, it looks much better than the uh google maps right you can also have a lot more options if you want to choose right i can use a uh, Azure Ocean, right? Uh, different different base map you can uh, choose from. I can also do maybe um, how about this one? 
uh, you can also do NLCD other color. I can also do, let me see here, CX, uh, open stream map or, or other, right. Anyway, so you can just play uh, with the basement and see if there's any basement you like. Once you mask out the image, you can also combine different uh, data layers uh, to visualize the data. If you see from this one, these are still remote sensing images, right? So it's still pretty big. But if you once you figure out the color, you might want to just basically make the color static so you can it, it won't change anymore. If you want to do that, uh, you can use the so-called image visualize. So because the remote sensing data might have um, multi-spectral bands, but when you visualize, once you use the visualize, it becomes just um, um, RGB. So uh, you basically change from source data to just a photo. And then from there, you, you can export the photo, you can do mosaicing. Um, so uh, this is how we can use to convert uh, an image to 8-bit RGB for display or export. So again, these are pretty much uh, just the same as we used uh, earlier, but right now we use the so-called image visualize. In Python, you're going, you also see this too, uh, star and star because this is a dictionary so inside here is a dictionary it's going to star star is going to unpack uh, the dictionary and so this is something that is the difference between python and uh, javascript api so make sure that you use this otherwise you need to use band and then equal uh, you can also use a max for example equal to something but um, uh, to make it consistent with a javascript api all you need to do is add these two stars so this is something that you need to uh, pay attention otherwise your source code won't work okay and so this is the how uh, the final the outcome of the image once we use the visualize right so from remote sensing image to rgb and how you visualize you can also control what you want uh, again i want to use uh force color composite five four and three and with a maximum value of uh, 0.5 you, this is how you visualize the uh, NDWI, so the normalized water index. You can also uh, use the palette. Again, these all are uh, very flexible. You can all customize these values and to find to to figure out the base output uh, you want. So essentially, after you do the conversion, we have two new layers. And let's go to here and take a look at this again. Turn this on and off. Right, image RGB and NDWI RGB. Uh, visually there's not much difference you cannot really see the difference so if i see here and um vi mask and this one um you cannot really visually see any changes but behind the scene right now this one is still remote sensing image but this one has become rgb color so it's it's very different if you if you want you can also use the uh inspector to look at the value right so if you see this one, uh, the original like NDWI, you can still get a value. But for the RGB, now it changes to RGB. So these values are no longer uh, represent the real NDWI because it has been converted. So uh, keep that in mind. If you want to, if you want to extract the original pixel uh, pixel value, you don't want to use the visualize. The visualize is just to uh, make it easier for you to. Um, export the data uh, because it's much smaller. It's just right now just a PNG uh, image. Okay. Next, uh, mosaicing. So, if you see from these two data layers, uh, now we have two separate data layers. How about this? You want to mosaic them together. You want to combine this as one single image. Can you do that? Of course. So this is what mosaicing uh, is. Is that you can mosaic as many images as you want. But keep it in mind because in this one we have uh, the water and also the original image. So this one is on top of the other. So if you if they are totally overlaid, uh, you might not be able to see the layer. So this is why we uh, important is the um, which one first and then which one on top. So again, these are still the same. Uh, the source code is still the same as the previous step, and only these two lines um, are new. So what does this mean? We have two separate images. Think about just like a user Photoshop. You want to uh, put those two data layers in a single one. Well, how can you do that? There's another one called image collection. So for now, 
uh, you just think, think about like image collection is basically a stack of images how you can put like a bunch of images together is just within the parentheses and then you put in the list a uh, square brackets so the first item will be uh, at the bottom and then you can add more and more this one on top of this one if you have another one you'll be on top of uh, all the previous data layers right so at the end basically you have an image collection of multiple uh, images and then you just apply a mosaic so anything on top uh, is going to be uh, so on top of the, the one at the bottom so at, at the end basically you're putting all the images together and to create a mosaic just like this so uh, as simple as that let's execute and then see what happened again uh come to here and turn the data layer right now because we only saw this one so as you can see we only have one data layer we no longer need multiple data layers right so the previously we have two data layers now we combine them as one so this is nice because um if you just want the final output like this uh simple uh you don't have to export multiple data layers next one clipping right so uh, this is the entire area if you just want a small subset of what you want you can set a filter or a, a reason or geometry and then you can just clip that so let's go to the source code again these are all the same as the previous one and the only thing new here is these three lines so we are just going to create a, a reason of uh, interest if you see from here it's geometry dot point so basically it's a location and then buffer so and then around that buffer we are just going to clip the image using the buffer so let's execute this one first to see uh the output and this is what it looks like right so this is the center of the point so this is the point uh, around the center here and then buffer by twenty thousand meters so twenty thousand meters to uh, basically the radius this is how you can clip uh clip an image if you use a buffer it's going to be a circle but you can certainly use a square or any polygon uh, you can also do uh, the clip so for example let me turn this one on uh, just to show you what it looks like right so this is the original image uh, the one entire length is seen and so this is what once it's being clipped uh, it looks like that but you don't have to uh, just clip by circle you can clip by rectangle so let me show you how we can do that i'm going to maybe just do a rectangle here uh, just to show you for example i just want the image within this section can you do that um yes so let's add another cell below and just to show you how we can do that in here we use the roi right but we need to know like which one is the original image so the original image is the mosaic so this is entire one is the mosaic and then we just need to clip but we can just maybe the roi too so this is the second roi and how do you actually retrieve the ROI? On the map here, I draw a rectangle. So the, if you want to retrieve the ROI, you can just uh, use the map dot user uh, ROI because once you draw the map, uh, draw a shape on the map, uh, it is the, the shape is going to save to this one. So user dot ROI, and then you can Alt Enter. If you want to see what's in there, you can just uh, ROI two Alt Enter. You will see this one. Um, so this is basically a uh, 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 JSON, but you don't want to uh, a JSON format. You don't want to use this one. You can just dot get info to see the real content, right? Dot get info, and then it will show you. Okay, this is a polygon. And it has five points, right? So once you have this one, then you can do the clipping. So again, it's actually pretty much the same like this one. Um, so we can just use let's say clip two and then equal to mosaic so the mosaic is the variable of the, of the image dot again you can still use a uh, clip parenthesis in this time we're going to pass in ri2 right and then alt enter lastly we can add the uh the the layer to the map add layer clip and then clip brackets so this will be uh clip two and then shift enter so let's come back to here we let's turn the layer off see if this there oh clip if we add the, add the layer clip clip 2 is it on here let me take a look uh, okay sometimes this might be just the 
uh, memory issue let me take a look Get two let me one this this one one more time okay and let me turn the layer off and let me draw a rectangle one more time just want to make sure that it work ex expected okay and then execute 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 oh he okay sorry i i it should be clip two because we just eat the original is still the the buffer one so we want the clip two and this time it should work okay let's go back here and turn the layer off okay so as you can see right now you have this one uh you can remove the rect uh, rectangle that we draw audio if you want so if you remove now now you have this like uh rectangle area that we just clip right so you can you can certainly passing uh hard coded the the uh, polygon numbers but if you just want to interactively uh, clip one image you can use the drawing tools in here to uh clip anything you like so again i can do it one more time if you if you want right i can do it maybe this time using uh something like this and see if it works right so i draw another rectangle and i can still use the same source code but this time it's going to add more because we we add a few more points and then clip and then one more time look at this right so simple and straightforward uh, you don't then uh, you don't really need to write many lines of code so i'm just going to delete this one and then hit save okay so you have the image now click and you can turn it on and off you can also think this so this is how you can do the mosaicing and uh clipping and for the next one i'm going to show you how you can you uh, uh change the color palette if this is a categorical image so I'm just going to execute the code first just to show you what it looks like so this is the global lane cover uh, map we're using the modis data again this is the id the unique id to the image and because the image has multiple main so we only use the doc select if you see this one here uh, uh backslash so this is basically if the line is not ending in here if you want to continue then you use the backslash but you can certainly just uh, use uh, remove this one to move them to the same line uh, it should work as well so but in uh, google's engine uh, the convention is that when you have an image and then if you want to apply multiple uh, things to the image uh, sometimes you go to the next line so i can just go here and then you can hit uh, uh, hit tap to basically in intend uh, the next line but you all need to make sure that you put a uh, backslash uh in here otherwise your source code won't work so um so make sure that you do this and the next one here is the uh palette so you see this one is pretty long uh why because we this is a categorical map uh it has many uh many uh lane cover types so we have 18 right if you want to inspect the value you can click the inspector and then click on the map to see the value like 10 um other pixel value 4 right 10 a lot of 10 5 8 and this is how you can change the color palette so you can have the minimum and maximum if you see from the minimum to maximum uh, maximum 0 17 that means you have a total of 18 so if it is categorical uh, uh, roster you want to use the palette to assign a color to each one then make sure that you have 18 colors in here right so uh, how many we have like one and then so this will be five five will be ten right 11 12 13 14 8 uh, 14 15 16 17 18 so you have 18 colors uh totally so each color uh going to have assigned to uh, one value like all the way from 0 to 17 so this is how you can end up a color palette like that uh, you can also use an nlcd like what we did uh, in the previous uh tutorial um you can basically assign a color you can also add a legend uh, to the map if you want so uh, you can play with that last one i'm going to show you how you can uh, download an uh, image thumbnail because this is all remote sensing data so it's everything running in the browser but if you want to just export the data and then you might want to create a report on, on uh, uh, if you need to use some of those uh, um, uh, data there are a couple of ways you can do that you can either take a screenshot uh, but the quality might not be very high so sometimes you might want to export 
the uh, the data but again you don't want to just download the original data right the got or the original remote sensing data because you will need some professional software packages to open the data so in this example i'm going to show you quickly how you can actually export the data as a png or jpeg and then you can just uh, um, insert that one to your report or your assignment so uh, how we're going to do that again i'm going to just execute this one this is the same one uh, we used earlier right we just load an image and then we visualize it then we add this one to the map that's it so this is the lens image and we right now we want to download the image uh, a thumbnail so it's very easy you can use a function in gmap so it'll be gmap.get image thumbnail and then so this is the one image is basically earth engine object uh it's this one right so this is the original data this is the image original remote sensing image uh, in the cloud and we want to visualize in this way and i want to download the image so as you can see right so you can also again uh shift tap on your keyboard to bring up uh, the the the, the, the uh, two tips so you'll be what kind of parameter you can provide and what does each one uh, represent so the first parameter is basically the earth engine image the second one is where do you want to output the image so if you're just passing the file name you'll be under the same you same directory where this jupyter notebook is located and then how you want to uh, visualize that right if you you can certainly change the color and also the dimension is how big you want the image to be let me just uh, slightly move this one here and to show you what we're going to get okay so right now in here we have two notebooks right we don't have any image in here yet but once we change this one maybe change it to a smaller let's do like 500 the dimension and later i'm going to show you how you can uh, change that okay so once you execute this one now on the left side here you can you can also directly execute the next line uh it's going to show the image in here right so the image uh down the in notebook but you can also go here to click and open that one using your uh, uh image viewer right so this is what it looks like right we just download download the image thumbnail and so here we use the um, uh, first color composite but you're also welcome to change it to other color so if i come back to here for example i want to change to um natural color uh it will be six five and four then you execute i can do that again uh right so now you see this one it changed to uh it's still false color but it's like close to natural color uh, vegetation is in green color and so again you can open this one right so pretty nice you just get that one to your computer and you don't really have to download the entire original image because that one might be uh 500 or 600 uh, megabyte but in the jpeg uh, the png here it's only 35k so less than one megabyte uh pretty easy you can also change the dimension so uh, if you want the high resolution this one here uh if you zoom in uh, it's going to uh the quality is not going to be very good uh but it's still pretty nice but if you want the higher resolution you can change the dimension so for example i change to 1000 and then execute it's going to the file size is going to increase right so 35 355k right now is 1.3 um, megabyte so if you see this one here if you use the zoom right now it's much better so much sharper compared to the original one again you can also show the image in here if you want okay so this is pretty um, uh, straightforward right how you can actually download the remote sensing image and this is just for one single one so in a future video i'm going to show you how you can download automatically for uh, entire image collection like automatically without having to actually do it one by one right so if you want like they say you have 10 images how can you download the thumbnail of those 10 images uh gmap actually has a function that you can just one line you can download all the images uh if you want okay so that's all for this uh, video and uh, just to recap what we talk about we talk about how to uh, uh, visualize using rgb and also do masking also mosaicing clipping and lastly how you can visualize uh, uh, categorical uh, raster data and also how to export the uh, image so uh, i hope you enjoy this video uh, i will see you in the next video take care